Hello, space nerds. This is a, tor- tor- a tutorial about how the navigation screen works in Space Nerds in Space, my multiplayer networked spaceship bridge simulator. So we're looking at the navigation screen here, and this allows you to drive the ship around. Um, there are two m- main methods of moving the ship, uh, the warp drive and the impulse drive. The impulse drive throttle is this uh, slider over here on the right side of the screen. So we can set the level of the impulse drive and start moving around. You can see up here we have the position. This is your X, Y, and Z uh, coordinates. And you can see the Z coordinate is changing as we drive through space. Um, you can use the arrow keys to steer uh, left and right. Uh, we'll yaw your ship left and right, up and down, we'll pitch up and down. Uh, actually up will pitch down and down will pitch up. Um, if you don't like that, you can press control I and invert the controls. Um, press control I again, back to normal. Um, you can use also WASD and Q and E will roll the ship. Um, you can press F1 if you can't remember the keys, and this will tell you what all the keystrokes are. Um, let's see, what else do I need to tell you about? Let's just go uh, around the screen and look at the different things we have. Docking magnets. Um, it, when you dock with a star base, you need to turn the docking magnets on with this button. Docking system engaged. And you can you click it again to turn them back off. Docking system disengaged. Uh, to dock with the Starbase, you also need to get the comms guy to request docking permission from the Starbase and uh, get the engineering guy to lower the shields. Um, what else? Uh, over here on the left side of the screen, we have the attitude indicator, which is, uh, I got this idea from looking at the Apollo mission attitude indicator. Um, it has two modes, absolute and relative. Um, in absolute mode, your view, your camera view is fixed, and as you move the ship around, change its orientation, the little image of the ship moves correspondingly. In relative mode, the camera view is directly behind the ship and remains that way, and instead of the ship moving, uh, the little rings around the ship move to show your orientation. Additionally, uh, on the top right and bottom, you have uh, yaw, pitch, and roll rate indicators. Um, and then down below, you have your heading and your mark. Um, the heading is... Let me orient this thing. So you see this large ring that is slightly lighter colored than the other rings. That shows your heading. So you can see right here that shows your current heading. It also matches this heading indicator over here. And the mark or elevation as you as you tilt up and down below that plane defined by the this lighter ring, um, the, the mark changes or the elevation changes. And you can see there is um, this circular indicator to indicate your mark. So why would you need your heading and mark? If you look on science um, and select something, like go over to science and scan around and select something and look at the details it shows a bearing and mark and so you can change your bearing and mark to match that and you will be pointed at the item an easier way of course is this green arrow right here corresponds to the direction um, of whatever science has selected so if i just sort of follow that green arrow i will end up pointing at whatever science has selected which is also shows up on the main view like this with this little rotating thing if it's close enough um, what else 
So that's sort of the attitude indicator things. Um, there is a zoom function, which is you can use either with the mouse wheel or this slider up here. Uh, <clears throat> it's I don't find it to be terribly useful, but it's there. You can also use the one key um, to change your camera position, which is distinct from zooming. So at the farthest zoomed out position, um, it looks like this, and then you can zoom in like that, or even more, and it just toggles through these different camera views. Um, there's this R is for reverse, so click that, and the ship starts driving in reverse. Notice the speed went down to zero and then back up. It doesn't go negative. Um, it's just a toggle and then the remaining thing I think that I need to show you is um, so I already talked about this green arrow pointing to whatever science has selected the blue arrow points in the direction of the weapons which can be important so if you're in a battle uh, the guns are on top of the ship and if whatever you're trying to shoot at is below you you cannot aim the guns at it so you need to coordinate with the weapons officer and you know flip your ship over as necessary and orient your ship in such a way that um, the guns can actually point at what you need them to point at. Um, and you can tell which way they're pointed by this blue arrow. And if you um, move the guns around, you can see the arrow moves. Um, let's see. Let's do the warp drive. So if I want to do the warp drive, I have to give it power on the engineering screen. So you have to request power from the engineer or the engineer has to be on top of things enough to know that you need it. Then you can select how much warp power you want here. And whenever you click this engage warp button, wherever this arrow, this needle happens to be, that's how that controls how far you warp. So if I, and it won't work unless it's above 0.75. So if I click this engage warp, we should warp some distance. And the direction I point is, or the direction of the warp is controlled at the instant you press the warp button. So if you press the warp button and move around some, you'll still warp in whatever direction you initially selected. So you can, uh, for example, Engage the warp, turn your ship around backwards, and you will warp backwards. So let's warp back. So, for example, if I turn sideways a little bit, it will continue to warp in whatever direction I initially selected. And while you're in warp, you get that static display on the nav screen, which is why I switched over to the main screen. Which you switch screens, by the way, with the function keys. F2 is nav, F1 is help, F3 is weapons, F4 is engineering, F5 is damage control, F6 is science, F7 is comms, F8 is main view, and F9 is the demon screen. Um, the star map button toggles between the main nav view and a star map view. And you can zoom in this with the one key, same camera position thing. This is the star system we're currently in. Uh, this other, these other star systems you can get to through warp gates if you have multiple solar systems. If you're only running one solar system, you'll only see one, and this is not terribly useful, um, but it's useful when you're running multiple solar systems. Um, standard orbit button, if you are nearby to a planet, which I'm not sure I'm quite near enough to it. Entering standard orbit. You click that and your ship will begin to orbit around the planet. And you click it again. Leaving standard orbit. To leave standard orbit. Um, the computer. Here you can enter commands like, for example, set course for the nearest starbase. Setting course for starbase zero. Now it doesn't, it's not smart enough to avoid trying to travel directly through the planet which is what it's going to do right now. So we will not do that. Uh, but it will point you in the direction of whatever. Um, for example, this ship. 
uh, right here. Setting course for the ship you belong, Tanner. You can set a course for ships by name. Um, let's see. Anything I didn't talk about on here. No, I think that's basically it. So, thanks for watching.